Hey, welcome back to the Nice Guys Show, everyone. Uh, again, I want to mention that if you like that theme song that's playing, I love it. It's uh, called Come Again. It's by Dodge and Fusky, and I have the links on the site. You can go buy it and support those guys. I'm here with two good friends of mine, Kathy McLaughlin and Dr. Michelle Wolford, and uh, we're just going to talk about current events right now and some uh, TV shows <laughs> and books. In fact, I have a new book coming out. It's going to be out next month. It's going to be called uh, Nice Knowing You. I'm yeah. sticking with the nice guy theme, the nice theme, even though, the, I don't know, Michelle's, and they both read, read some of my books. Do you think I'm nice in the books, or kind of? I love it. Well, yeah. I love your sense of humor in it. I yeah. just, I think A little sarcastic, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I think it's third grade. I do, too. Third grade? I think, I think they're great. Oh! No, it's kind of third grade, too. No! I think <laughs> they think they're great. I think third grade's when I discovered women, so yeah, that would be, I had a crush on my teacher then. How'd that work out for you? She's probably about 70 now, so she, who knows? She's a, a cougar in training. <laughs> Let's talk about, we, we all three of us just saw the movie The Help. Yeah. What did you think of the movie? Well, I personally loved it because, I mean, that's kind of how I grew up. I grew up in the South, and even though I was very close to my mother and father, mm -hmm. um, we had a woman, Lucy, who lived, um, or who's from Columbia, who came and lived with us for the first six years of my life. And, I mean, she is a mother to me. I mean, I'm still very close to my own mother, but just love her with all my heart. So watching the movie and just understanding that really special interaction and bond that's created, I mean, I felt like, I know the movie's about me in a way. I was like, right. oh my gosh, this is amazing. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. You just went back to see her, didn't you? I did. Yeah. I just went back to Honduras um, for my Christmas vacation to visit her. Mm -hmm. um, I have not seen her in 21 years. Wow. wow. It was unreal. Yeah, trying to get back into speaking Spanish and just learning like the lifestyle that she lives and being a part of. She lives in Choluteca, which is a town in Honduras. And si. Yeah, si, tambien. <laughs> and um, it was just, it was totally awesome. Yeah, for yeah. those of you who haven't seen the movie, it's, it's about um, white women who have their help raising their children, right? They were rich people. It was mostly, I think it was set in the late 50s, right? Early 60s, mm -hmm. that time yeah, I think frame, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was, just, it was just interesting to see how the, uh, the African-American help was treated. It was, you know, kind of disturbing in some ways, but... They Horrific. Yeah, you know, wasn't it? Yeah. Right, what did you think of the movie? It, it just, it's, it was so, it had to be good because it just grabbed my heart and just, you know, tugged at it so hard. It was unthinkable to me to see these women so cold, so spoiled so ungrateful for mm -hmm. truly what I think was the backbone of their household and their child rearing and um, it was very powerful. Yeah, I was curious how they were going to translate the book into the movie because I, I read the book first. I love the book. Um, the book is written in three different voices. It's two of the girls who are the help. Mm -hmm. It's in their voice and it's also in you know the main actor's uh, the, the writer, I guess her name is mm -hmm. Skeeter in the movie. Yeah. It's also her voice in it. So you, yeah. as you're reading the book, you hear three different voices mm -hmm. and three different perspectives. Mm -hmm. And uh, the movie, I thought, translated that perfectly well. I mean, you really got the point from each individual actor. They just did a great job with it. Mm. So highly recommend Yeah, the thumbs up. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> three thumbs up. Now, what about, I know tonight, now you don't watch this too much, but I know you, you do occasionally. I am, uh -oh. I am hooked on this. It's called The Bachelor. And I think they're in their 16th season now. I don't know. I actually saw it for the first time probably about two years ago uh -huh. with some of my girlfriends in medical school. Mm -hmm. So um, I watched, I think it's the Alley episode. Yeah. Well, she's San Diego, right? I think the, a lot of them are from this area. Oh, really? I heard she moved. Ah, uh, maybe. I don't know. I'm not very up on current events. Yeah. But anyways. So you've seen it. I <laughs> love it. What, what cracks me up about The Bachelor, though, is I, the, the girls especially, they, when you put them all together, they get like catty and overly emotional mm -hmm. and they're saying how they're falling in love with this guy after you know a mere two weeks yeah not even it's I mean, like five it's, minutes <laughs> how, can, how can that be is it is it because of all the alcohol and or is i it, think it's scripted you think it's all scripted a lot of it i oh, do interesting it might be i don't know maybe we'll have to have some of the the contestants i guess you would call them I have to have some of them on the show because i know some are from the san diego Roberto area Roberto lives here well, wasn't that the guy that was seeing Allie? He's the one that was in the Allie, yeah. I think he's cute, personally. <laughs> well, did they break up? I think, I think they did. <laughs> All right, so there, he's, he's single. What, and something happened with you, too, about the Bachelorette? No? Oh, my gosh. So, my 11 best girlfriends from medical school, they used to, we'd get together and watch trashy TV, as we called it, Monday night, get strawberries, champagne. Yeah, yeah. We'd get off clinic shift, you know, we would mm -hmm. just come and just watch the Bachelorette. And almost all of them are either married, engaged, or had serious boyfriends, except for me. And so they decided that they were going to fill out the, I guess, the, the essay or the application. Right. And so they sent it to me, and they were like, you're going on. You're, you're going applying on. for it. Yeah. 
And so I get a phone call from my friend Alexis, and she's like, my brother, because he films a lot of movies, he's a, she said, he's flying down to San Diego, and he's going to film you, and you're going to be on the next Bachelor. Wow. So I was like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? I mean, I could do the, like, being the girl with all the guys thing, but uh -huh. I don't know how I feel about being with all the women competing for a man. Oh, that's the fun part. I don't know. You would do well. Absolutely. <laughs> if you got accepted, would you go? Um, I think you would. Yeah, maybe I would. I mean, why not? Life's short. It'd be they a should do experience. an older version, too. They That's should do, what I was right? thinking. They should do like an old fuck like me yeah. with a bunch of women from like 40 to 60. Well, when Wouldn't you be said being 50 and being back in the dating scene, yeah. and then you even use the words finding true love again, yes. which is what they always say. Yes. I was like, oh my God, they should totally do one for... For the old timers. Yeah, we should call we're just, them. We're just not going to have any hot tub scenes or, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try to limit the nudity a little bit, and the women probably won't be quite as emotional as, as the 20-year-olds are. These, these women probably, I don't know. Really? <laughs> it depends. That's true. They, they, yeah, they can be emotional at any age, can't you? Yeah. I guess it all depends. Hmm. So what other show? Oh, Dr. Drew you like to watch, right? I'm yeah. a huge fan of Dr. Drew. I just... Um, I think Which one? The, the rehab? The, he's the, got two shows, I like... Right? All, I love the uh, the celebrity rehab, and um, I love his show on HLN. Um, he just tackles real-life stories, and um, he's very passionate, and he's very knowledgeable, and he has really excellent um, guests on his panel, and he's very, very um, empathic and heartfelt. Um, he genuinely cares about the stories he's telling, and... Um, I just feel like it's a new a new era for news and, and current events. I just, I'm, I love Dr. Drew. Hmm. You're a Dr. Drew fan? You're probably more of a Dr. Oz fan. No, you know what's interesting? I actually don't have a TV. Oh. Like, if I watch my sports center, I'm usually at a friend's house. A or bar. Yeah, or a bar, I guess. Mm -hmm. Or I'm, you know, Netflixing a movie here or there. But I think I was with one of my best girlfriends, and he came on, because I think I've seen the rehab uh, mm -hmm. segment. And... If it, I'm, it's a bright show. I do like it as well. I do think that he cares a lot about his patients. Yes. And he's really about more of that holistic model, even though he's just an MD as well. Yes, yes. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Now, you're a Californication fan, as I am. I'm a huge Californication fan. I, I am, but yeah. they're disappointing me right now. I know. I think they're running out of... They're running out of material, and really they're right. just going... It's the same stuff over and over again, and I found it the last two times quite boring, and I wanted to turn it off, and it made me sad because I used to live for California. <laughs> I, I think these shows, they seem to last about, what, five, six years? And I think uh, what happens is they, they find a formula early in the series, and they try to stick with that formula every year. Mm -hmm. And it, I mean, it works in the beginning because they found, you know, they found the, the, the key to success. But then right. I think it gets stale and they need something fresh to come in. And I think they handle it well with Dexter. Because have either, either of you seen Dexter? I haven't You're seen it. I've not, but I've it, right? heard such great things about yeah, it. Yeah, I, I think they handle it well with Dexter because they always introduce a villain into the show who's, you know, distinct, unique, um, just... He, he just he or she adds something to the show that you didn't have in the previous season. So I think they, they handled smartly in Dexter, and I can see that going on for 10, you know, 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, as far as Californication, I'm not sure how much longer it has, you know. This but may be it. I still, I still enjoy, even though it's the same joke over and over and over, I still enjoy it. I enjoy that Hank Moody's the alpha <laughs> male that, you know, I wish I was and I'm not. Um, <laughs> The, the Charlie Runkle thing is just hysterical. His, his agent is uh, Evan Handler, right? What uh -huh. if he's related to Chelsea Handler? Wouldn't that be funny? Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Huh. <laughs> but he, uh, yeah, he's he's a riot. I love the one. You saw him in Sex in the City, right? He was, yeah. what, Charlotte's? Yeah, yes. a husband. Charlotte's yes. husband. That's right. Yes, yeah. yeah, so he's hysterical. But he lost so much weight. I was like, man, is this guy sick? Or is he just, you know, yeah. bulking up and working right. out? Or what's going on with him? But yeah. So I watch that every Sunday night. And there's actually a new show Sundays on uh, right around Californication called House of Lies. I also highly oh. recommend that. Okay. If you haven't seen that, check that out. That's uh, Don Cheadle and Kristen Bell, I think, are the two main actors in it. Mm -hmm. Smart show. Very, very funny, I thought. You know, mm -hmm. so check it out. It's definitely worth watching. Okay. Um, American Idol. Yeah. Wasn't it? So the one last night was the San Diego one, right? Yeah, I watched it for the first time. You watched time. it? Oh, you did? Yeah, first time ever. Oh. I liked it. Well, how was it? What, it was, is it funny because there's all, all the bad performances are on the first couple <laughs> yeah. nights? Or is it, it was know. bad performances, but also I was just <clears throat> really impressed with some of the talent. I mean, I, there's, I feel like there's so many talented people out there. Yes. And so what a great way to get people some publicity, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to express like their heart and soul. Mm -hmm. And they did it on the uh, aircraft carrier, didn't they? Yeah, I think I, I saw. Yeah. Oh, okay. Y'all didn't have to see the picture of Steven Tyler with his shirt off, did you? 
Oh, in one of the magazines? <laughs> yeah. Yes. God. Yes. <laughs> Don't put it up. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I love the guy, but, yeah, you got to wear a shirt, dude. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's just not real good. But, yeah, American Idols, good show. I think they lost something when they lost Simon Cowell because what they have on the show now are talented uh, musicians and performers who are judging and I think that's a different skill than having someone who has an eye for talent. So mm -hmm. I think Simon Cowell is brilliant in that he knows, you know, the potential of someone. He can mm -hmm. see, you know, can I translate that person into, into money, into record sales, into a, you right. know, a full tour. Um, whereas, you know, like Stephen Toller would look at him and say, wow, this guy can sing. This guy's got a great stage presence. So right. I think losing, l losing people like Simon Cowell and Paul Abdul, I think kind of hurt the show a little bit. Mm -hmm. Although they now have their show called The X Factor, right. which is they're doing exactly what you just said. You're right. And that, Marketability. and. So we'll see, I guess. You know, mm -hmm. it, it seems like a lot of the past uh, idol winners, you know, some of them are very successful, but a lot of them just faded away into obscurity. Yes. So I think uh, Simon probably had the right idea, and he said, yeah, you know, this guy's going to win, but he's not going to make any money. Right. So not a good choice. Um, the, the one final thing I wanted to bring up was the Joe Paterno thing, which I mm -hmm. personally find very sad. I'm from Pennsylvania. And, uh, you know, just to hear that Joe passed away yesterday, just, yeah. I think he just died of a broken heart, as people, yes. you know, can do. And he just, he just dedicated his entire life to that university. And, yes, something unfortunate went on there. And how aware of it he was, we don't know. You know, how yeah. he handled it, we, we don't really know the truth behind all that. But uh, just feel sad to see him go. He's just a yeah. you know, your happy valley. He's a sad valley right now. So I want to thank you both for being on our show. Thanks and for having uh, us. We're going to have you again real soon. Thank you. Tune in every Monday at 11 a.m. The Nice Guy Show. Thanks, guys.